The other day, a good kite-making friend, Manny Alves, who lives in Rhode Island, uh, showed me something that I've never seen before. Uh, there are many things I probably haven't seen before, but this is one of them in a fighter kite that kind of took me by surprise. What he had done is he put vents in the kite, holes in the kite sail. But instead of letting the air just go through those, he put another sail on the backside covering up those holes so that the wind would be going through the backside of the kite instead of just out the hole. Well, Manny is a very inventive kite maker and he innovates all kinds of different things about a kite part or whatever you're talking about in fighter kites. He has the most ingenious solutions you can imagine. I'm really uh, privileged to know him. And I took that idea and put my simplified twist on it because the way he does it looked a little more complex than I wanted to tackle for my first attempt. So what I did was simply made a kite, regular fighter kite, out of one of my normal templates. And then I cut a three inch diameter hole in the center. This is centered. This is the wingtip line. Let's see here. This is the wingtip line here, wingtip to wingtip. And it crosses right here in the center of this three inch diameter hole that I cut. Then, out of the clear material, I'm, I just wanted it to look like a vented kite in the air. So I used clear material and I made a pattern that looked like this for the back sail. And I decided I wanted that sail to be on top of the spine. So I put that, I built the kite and then put this second sail on it like this. I used contact cement to bond the two pieces together, but most kite makers seem to prefer double-sided tape. Either one will work. Now, I made this so that it has this, I thought that the spine height would give it a little more freedom, I guess you'd say, of the air coming through here and create, might be called a turbo tunnel, <laughs> for a lack of a different word. Uh, <clears throat> and so when the kite is in the air and its sail is, uh, you know, making like a tracking where it's compressed, this is what happens to that back sail. It forms a tunnel. And the air that's coming through the front of the kite in the vent goes right down through that tunnel. Now, so what? <laughs> well, I didn't know whether it would really make a difference or not or what difference it would make. But when I flew it, and I only have had about a half an hour of experience with this kite in winds that were between zero and six miles an hour, so not a lot of experience for sure. But I flew it, and I also flew the same kite pattern made with polyfilm like this, but without a vent at all, to compare how that flew compared to this one. Well, this one was much quieter. Wow, this is just like silent. And it was faster. I couldn't really get a good handle on how it performed at the very edges and beyond the edges of the wind because of the 
turbulent winds I had to deal with, but I was really pleasantly surprised and hope that uh, as I get more experience with it, that will simply be reinforced. So this, uh, I didn't put this back sail all the way to the trailing edge here, as you can see. I put a piece of tape, black tape, across the bottom edge, the trailing edge of, of that second sail. You can see it here. And it rests on top of the spine, so there's a lot of room in there. And I think that I would, I use contact cement to glue the two together. And I think I would do that again. It worked well. I have a batten here and a batten here, which are just parallel to the spine, but they start right here at the top of the shoulder. And it just goes from the wingtip line to the trailing edge. And then I have another one right here from the wingtip line that follows the, print, the outside uh, of the diameter, the three inch diameter vent hole that I cut, and it goes to the trailing edge. I'm not sure that this one right here, this batten is really needed because this seam, the hem on this is probably rigid enough to not need it, but I put it on there anyway. And when I balance the kite from nose to tail, it balances about, oh, about three-eighths, maybe a quarter of an inch noseward of the wingtip line. So it's a very uh, spinny kite. When it spins, it rotates. And boy, does it spin. And uh, I like the way it performs. I'm going to play around with it a lot and probably make additional kites like this. I hope this is useful for you and you're experimenting with fighter kite making. And if you have any uh, desire to make one, I hope you share your results.